So uh, I know those of you that were here last month uh, really got a lot out of it. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit and was able to take what Keith showed us last month and apply that pretty directly. Now he's going to do part two, the finial, that goes along with uh, the, the uh, red and computer cast collar. All right, you're at I'm glad to see everybody came back uh, after last month's demo. That's <laughs> um, I've got a bit of a confession. Prior to volunteering for this, uh, to do this demonstration, I'd only turned about six finials. Um, those of you who have seen me display my work in the Instant Gallery and can do the math know that I displayed more than six hollow forms. So the truth is, some of those finials were doing double duty, just on different hollow forms. Um, the advantage of the modular system, I guess Henry Ford would be proud. Um, needless to say, there's nothing like uh, be nice to do a demonstration in front of 30 of your friends that uh, will focus you like a laser beam. And for the last month or so, I've spent a lot of time in my lab, and I've, I've turned a lot of finials. So, uh, um, what I'm going to do today is show you how I turn a finial and incorporate a uh, threaded pewter, pewter ring into it and so uh, the threads will match those of that I did last month in the uh, hollow form. And um, there's, four step, there's four parts to it. The first part is to turn and thread the pewter ring. The second part is to turn the finial. Then I attach the pewter ring, threaded ring, to the uh, finial and uh, lastly, I'll finish off the base of the finial. Before I get started, I'd just like to take some time and acknowledge a couple of people and I'm also just talk about the steps that I've taken to get to this point, figuring out how to put this whole unit together. Um, it's obvious that these finials are inspired by Cindy Drozda's uh, design and they're in the style that she's popularized. I have a DVD, Finial Star, and um, I've watched it numerous times, and it's, it's a really great DVD, as, as well as the actual Finial Star project. She, she goes into Finial design considerations uh, at, at quite a depth, and um, she also deals with the three basic cuts of spindle turning and turning a Finial. Um, if you get a chance to get, watch the DVD, I'd highly recommend that there's a lot of information there. Taking me in a little closer to home, Ed has put on a couple of great demonstrations <coughs> both on uh, spindle turning in general and uh, finials in particular. And he has a tutorial on the club website under the tutorial section on design considerations of, of uh, finials. And I highly recommend looking through that. There's a lot of good information there in particular about the different elements of a finial and how to put them together into a cohesive unit. So. Um, when I first started making these, my first, first step was to take a, I was using an oversized pen blank, and I would turn it round and turn a tenon on, and then epoxy on a pewter ring. Then I would hold that in my collet chuck, uh, sorry, the uh, step jaws of my chuck, and I would turn the threads onto it, and finish off the bottom of the finial. Once I'd done that, I was left with something that looked like this. And I would take those threads, I'd screw them into this PVC adapter and hold that in the, uh, in the chuck. So, uh, and once I had that done, then I would be able to turn, turn the actual finial. There were a couple of problems with this uh, procedure um, that, I, that I had to figure out. The first problem was with the threading. I couldn't get the threads all the way to the base of the finial. The, uh, the threads in the die holder ran out and, and the, die, the die would actually crash into this larger diameter. And so because of that, I couldn't thread this all the way down to the collar in a, pewter, in a uh, hollow form. And how I worked my way around that was I put this parting cut in, and then that way I could actually screw this down fully into the uh, hollow form. Right. Can, small... can, can you hold it like this so that we can see the... Okay. Whoops. 
There you go. Now you can see the relief. You see that uh, parking cap that I put in there. Now it was a small detail, but it was something that I wasn't very happy with, and I was trying to figure out how to how to uh, get those threads to go all the way to the base. The second issue that I had was when I was turning the finial, there was some vibration. Uh, now you're always going to get some vibration turning a finial, particularly out towards the end. But I think there was more here than, than I needed to deal with. I was able to cope with it, but it was something that I would have liked to eliminate. And I think a lot of the vibration was coming from the fact that I was holding it in a uh, plastic chuck. And then the last problem that I was having, and this was the biggest problem, was when I had finished turning the finial, what were the forces of the turning and possibly some heat generated? The finial was getting stuck in this PVC adapter. And of course, at this point, it was all skinny and elegant and particularly weak. And I broke a bunch of finials just trying to unscrew them back out of here, which was pretty discouraging after spending the time turning the finial. So, so those were the three issues that I was facing um, that I needed to sort out. And so I decided to go back to the drawing board and start from basics. And what I decided to do was to turn and thread the pewter ring first, and then set that aside. And then to turn the finial by more conventional means, in particular the way I was holding it on the lathe. Um, and once I had turned the finial to completion, then glue the pewter ring to it. And then the final thing that I would have to worry about, and I figured I'd cross that bridge when I got to it, was how to finish off the bottom of that. So that's what I'm going to do today. And um, those are the four steps that we'll go through today. I'm not going to do any casting. Um, I did that last month, and I'm, I'm sure everybody's pretty familiar with uh, what's needed to happen. What you need to do is pour yourself a basically a column of pewter, 7 eighths of an inch in diameter. And the mold that I made for that was a scrap piece of wood, and I drilled a 7 eighth inch hole with a Forstner bit, and just poured the pewter into that. You want to make sure you're using kiln dried wood. Don't uh, pour it into green wood. You don't want that moisture expanding and bursting up, uh, bursting the, the wood apart. And also be aware <coughs> that there's a lot of pewter going in there. It's going to take quite a while to cool down. It may look like it's um, uh, that it's set, and on the outside it might be, but inside it still might be molten. So molten. So give it some time to cool off. And then the last thing is it's kind of it's not going to come out of here real easy. And what I did was, once it was cooled, I just drilled a hole in the bottom, oops, took my knockout bar, and just pounded it out, and it came out pretty easily then. Obviously, the mold is a one-off. <coughs> Subsequently, I've made myself some molds. And uh, these ones I can use to either pour a straight column or a cylinder uh, tube. Um, and that's what I'm going to work with here. Is um, essentially what I have is a <coughs> tube with a 7 8 inch diameter and an internal diameter slightly less than half an inch. Is that that stuff you pour? <coughs> yeah, that's silicone. Silicone. Yeah. Um, where was I? Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, the main reason why I did that was just not so much to reduce on the amount of pewter that I was using, but to reduce on the amount of drilling that I needed to do. Um, obviously, I needed to remove less material now for the internal diameter. So the first thing I'm going to do is set that in uh, my jaws. <coughs> And what I need to do is to turn this outside diameter to 53 60 fourths, give or take a 64th. Um, <laughs> the, um, that's, that's the outside diameter that I need for the threads that I'm going to be uh, cutting into here. Just 
turning it round and round. I need to do the whole column because I only need a, a ring that's about three eighths of an inch or so. Um, okay. While I've got this set up, um, I'm going to just true up the face down here. And this is going to be the face that's going <coughs> to be uh, it's going to fit to the base of the uh, finial, so I want that nice and flat and true. Jumped out of focus somehow. Did we change the setting? Now we can turn the threads on it. And I'm using a, uh, oh I'm sorry, now before I turn the threads, I need to drill that uh, inside hole to half inch. And half inch is just what I've chosen, that's the, uh, the size of the tenon that I put on the, uh, on the video. So uh, that's why I need a half inch hole here just to match with that. If I was doing this drilling from a solid uh, cylinder, then I would start off with a smaller drill bit and work my way up to, uh, to the half inch. Now we're ready to thread it. I'm using a die holder, which is pretty much the same concept as the holder that I used for the, uh, to, to hold the tap on last month. It's a uh, large diameter, about a two inch diameter piece of aluminum that I've drilled a hole in here to accept the die. And then on the back side, there's a hole that's gone through here. So that way I'm able to hold the die and everything is uh, orientated on the, the axis on the lathe. Now, last month when I was tapping, uh, somebody asked, and I forget who it was, if I used oil when I was tapping. Um, I don't know if uh, does anybody remember asking that question? Maybe my person might here. Anyway, somebody asked if I used oil. And my reply was no, that I didn't. Uh, because the pewter was so soft, I hadn't found it necessary well, that was true with turning the threads on the uh, female part that was inserted into the hollow form. I was having a lot of trouble getting a decent finish on the threads of this male part. And I remembered that question, and I thought, well, let me try a bit of oil. Well, it was like night and day. Um, mm -hmm. I couldn't believe how nice a finish. It was like I was, had this shiny stainless steel bolt that I just produced on my lathe. It was awesome. So. I'd like a chance, firstly, to thank whoever it was that asked that uh, question. Um, thank you for the idea. And um, secondly, I'd just like to answer the question again. Um, and that is, yes, I always use oil. <laughs> and you should too. I need to uh, lock the spindle here. drops of oil. And the pewter is pretty soft. It doesn't take a whole lot of uh, of force to, to get this. Um, I think what's happening 
is the oil just lubricates and uh, if without using it, the scraps of pewter were, were melting and kind of binding against the, the threads that I've just cut. All right. Just uh, thread it a little bit more. What, what size did you say those caps were, the cap and die? Half inch um, by 14 TPI. Which is confusing because three inch. it takes a three quarter inch drill. And uh, I believe the half inch, they're NPT, so I think the half inch refers to the actual size of the pipe that the threads are used on. Yeah, was it quick for the thread standard across the pipe? Right, two right. 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 So, yeah, that's not the actual size of the, um, yeah. of the type of die. Um, and you can see you're getting a pretty nice um, finish there. And now that we've uh, done that, I just uh, part that ring off. Spindle lock. Spindle lock. Thank you. Just testing if you guys were paying attention. We were. <laughs> I wasn't. Uh, <laughs> so Keith will have a powermatic and a general. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I'm cutting right where the threads are. If you keep that up there, you don't have to look in the shavings to try and find uh, the thread. So, there's our pewter thread, pewter ring, threaded, and um, this finished uh, side is the side that's going to be orientated towards the, the base of the, the ring. We're still going to have to finish off the other side. So I'm going to set that aside. Oh, I'm sorry. Once I've got it to this point, what I do is drop it in some acetone and uh, just to clean off any oil residue um, so that it doesn't interfere with the adhesion of the epoxy. Um, and I've been using acetone to clean that off.